Watercolour is a fun, expressive and loose medium, so it's not surprising that so many beginners want to learn more about watercolour. To help you get started with watercolour, I'm going to be running through all of the materials that you need, as well as running through some top tricks, techniques and effects that you can learn with watercolour that will really help to transform your paintings. You can download my free watercolour guide. If you click the link below, you'll go to my website and on my website, I have a free resources section. So you can download any of the resources on there, including my beginner's guide to watercolour. And if you want to take part in some of my classes, then I do have Skillshare and I've just uploaded a brand new class to Skillshare, which is five galaxy paintings in watercolour. If you'd like to check that out and also claim a free month trial period on Skillshare, then I do have a link below in the description as well. And I also am on Patreon as well. So if you'd like to support me over there and see what sort of things I do in there, then please do check the link out below. But let's just jump right into today's video. There's a lot of materials you can use with watercolour, but to keep things as simple and cost effective as possible, I'm just going to be running through the most common watercolour materials. So let's start with the paints. The two main types of watercolour paints are watercolour pans, which come in full or half pans, and watercolour tubes with the paint contained in a tube. You can use one or the other, or both, and I'd recommend starting with a small set. Watercolour pans are made up of pigment, binder and additives that become activated with water. They are compact, easy to store, easy to travel with and a lot less messy than tubes. They come in a variety of sets and even a small set will contain a variety of colours. Once you've activated them with water, they're ready to use, so they're very convenient. You can use them straight from the palette onto paper or mix colours up first before you use them. One thing I like to do when I get a new set of pans is create colour swatches first so I can see how the colours look and create a customisable palette. I adjust my water to paint ratio to create more vibrant and translucent colours. The more water you add, the more translucent a colour is and the less water you add, the more vibrant it is. You get good colour saturation with watercolour pans. Now a downside to watercolour pans is that colours can become muddied very quickly. This happens if you're transferring your paintbrush between pans without washing your brush in between. As colours become muddied, they will change colour and lose its richness. A tip I have is to use two jars of water to rinse your brushes. Rinse your paintbrush thoroughly in the first jar so you get rid of most of the paint, and then rinse it again in the second jar to get rid of any residue. This will really help keep your brushes clean and prevent the pans from becoming muddied. You can also create clear washes of colour by rinsing your brushes thoroughly in between painting. Another problem with pans is that they can get stuck in the set and are difficult to remove. I have to use a palette knife to gently loosen them to remove them. The reason why they need to be removed is so that you can identify colours when you replace them, refill them and clean underneath them. The pans can get really dirty underneath where water seeps in between the pans and you may need to clean them a lot. One good thing is that you can refill pans with corresponding tubes which is more cost effective than buying another pan and you can also create new colours if you want. Many watercolour pans come in a set with a palette attached. You can reawake colours on the palette by simply adding water, so there's less wastage, but sometimes it's necessary to clean the palette to prevent muddy colours. The palettes are really easy to clean. And perhaps the most important thing to remember with pans is their quality. You don't want to invest your money in a set of pans that isn't going to give you good results, and unfortunately many cheap sets are poor quality. As tempting as it is buying a cheap set of paints, it's better to spend a little more money on a better set of pans. You don't need a huge set either. Even if you just bought five colours in either pans or tubes, the three primary colours and a white and a brown, you can still create a variation of paintings because you can mix colours together and create new colours. And the quality will be good because you've invested in higher quality brands.
Watercolour tubes are made up of pigment, binder and additives that become activated with water, just like pans. Tubes are a more liquid and creamier form of watercolour, but they work just the same as pans. Watercolour tubes contain more paint than pans, so therefore they are better for larger scale work and a high volume of work. You can buy different sized tubes and buy them as individuals or sets. To activate them, squeeze the paint from the tube onto a palette and use them with water to thin them down. Again, you can adjust the water to paint ratio to make the paint either more translucent or vibrant, depending on your preference. Tubes are more concentrated than pans, so they appear more vibrant, but the reality is that it's how much water you use which determines how vibrant the paints are. Tubes feel the same as pans. You can create a lot of effects with them, and they have good saturation. Investing in good quality tubes is the key for good results. As tubes contain more paint, there can be more wastage with them than pans, but remember that you can reactivate colours by adding water. Also, tubes are more cost effective because you get more for your money. It's easier to identify watercolour tubes than pans as all of the information about them is on the side of the tube. You also have more customisable options than pans as you can mix tubes together to create new colours. A couple of things to consider with tubes is that sometimes a crust can form around the cap of the tube and the caps can get stuck. Also, tubes can dry out if the cap isn't properly on and air gets into the tube. You can also get paint separation with tubes if you squeeze out the gum arabic binder. So if this happens, you'll need to stir the mixture to prevent separation. There are many different types and brands of watercolour brushes, and as a beginner, it's difficult to know which brushes to invest in and which ones to avoid. So to make things easier, I'm going to talk through the most common types of watercolour brushes and how you can use them to create different watercolour effects. Like with paints, it's not about buying the largest set possible, but instead buying a small quality set which contains a variety of sizes, shapes and types of brush, as this will give you the best range of painting techniques. A small precision brush is used to create fine details and crisp sharp lines in your paintings. I like using these brushes when painting things like grass, facial features and details as this brush has a small fine point. You can also flatten the brush to create other effects. A medium sized brush is bigger than a precision brush but smaller than a large brush. I like using this brush mostly in foregrounds as you get bigger strokes than a precision brush but it's not big enough for backgrounds. A medium brush is good for filling in areas too and is the best all round size brush. Large brushes are best for large surface area paintings as they hold more water and pigment and you can cover a large surface area quickly and have smooth and consistent brush strokes. Larger brushes are also great for looser paintings as they hold a lot more water for a long time. You'll get thicker lines with these brushes too. I'd recommend having a flat brush in your set because they can be used in a range of ways. You can angle them to create crisp sharp lines and they easily cut into corners. You can use the tip of the brush, side of the brush or flat head to create lots of effects. This helps to create a lot of texture in your paintings. So for example, these brushes would be great to create branches, trees, foliage, grass and other textures. Experimenting with different angles of the brush will help you learn how to create unique effects. A fan brush is one of my favourite watercolour brushes and that is because you can create a lot of textures and expression in paintings with this brush. The bristles are more spaced out than conventional brushes which means they get drier quicker and are great for dry brush techniques. They closely mimic landscape textures, so if you're a landscape artist or incorporate textures in your paintings, I would make sure to have one of these brushes in your set. The key when purchasing paint brushes is again making sure you buy good quality brushes. It is better to have a small set of around 5 to 8 good quality brushes than hundreds of cheap quality brushes. 
Cheap brushes will not be durable and you will need to replace them often. And it's also difficult to get good results in your paintings. Cheap brushes don't absorb water and pigment well, and the bristles are often hard, firm, scratchy and prone to wear and tear. It's hard to get soft and loose effects with these brushes as the brush strokes are streaky and inconsistent. Better quality brushes will give you much better results, and they don't have to cost the earth either. You can buy good quality brushes at a reasonable price. I've listed a few personal recommendations for supplies in the description, just in case you need a starting point on which brands to research more. I can also feel the difference between the poorer and better quality brushes. I'm finding it more difficult achieving the effects that I want with the poor quality brush. In our side-by-side -side comparison, you can see that the lines are more streaky with the poor quality brush, whereas they are smoother with the better quality brush. You won't regret spending a little bit more money on better quality brushes, as you really do get what you pay for. Watercolour paints and brushes are important, but did you know that the type of paper you use is equally, if not more important? Even if you are using the highest quality paints, if you are painting on bad quality paper, you will not get good results. Investing in good paper will help enhance your colours, vibrancy and allow pigment to move across the paper more freely. It's also more absorbent, meaning it can take more layers of water and is resistant against warping. Investing in paper designed for watercolour is essential and making sure you paint on paper with a minimum weight of 140lb or 300gsm will prevent warping once it's dried. There's different types of paper to choose from, from cold press to hot press and from watercolour sheets to watercolour blocks. Cold pressed paper has a rougher texture, whereas hot pressed paper has a smooth surface. Watercolour sheets will need to be taped down prior to painting and watercolour blocks are already stretched out so you can paint straight onto your paper. It doesn't matter what your personal preferences are to the type of paper you use, just make sure it's good quality so you get the best results possible. Poorer quality paper is often quite thin and not very absorbent. When you add water it will buckle and this can create uneven distribution of pigment and once paper is buckled it's really difficult to smooth it down into its original shape. You'd be surprised at how painting results can vary too, so it's always worth testing a few different brands of paper first and seeing which paper gives you the best result. Checking how vibrant colours are, how well colours blend and if you have consistent flow of pigment is important. So always make sure you are painting on good paper. So let's talk about a few other materials that may come in handy when painting with watercolours. Tape is a key supply I would recommend investing in, as it's important to tape down your paper to a surface before you start painting. Of course, if you're painting on a block, then you don't need to use tape, as the paper is stretched. But if you're painting on a sheet, always tape it down to prevent warping. I always tape down all sides of the paper so it's secured to the surface and no ends pop up. You can use scotch tape, masking tape or washi tape for this process. A top tip I have for keeping brushes clean and preventing muddy colours is to use two jars of water. If you use just one jar of water it will need replacing often, whereas two jars will mean you just need to change the water less. Simply rinse through your paintbrush in the first jar of water and then give it a second rinse through in the next jar of water. This will remove any excess residue from the brushes and you can just paint to your heart's desire. Watercolour pencils are a great addition to a watercolour set if you want a more controlled approach to watercolour. You can use the pencils to first sketch out a drawing and then apply water to create the effect of a painting. Sometimes beginners find watercolours overwhelming because they're such a loose medium, so pencils give you the best of both worlds and a mix of drawing and painting. Make sure you have a pencil sharpener on hand to sharpen your pencils. Sharp pencils are best for sketching with as blunt pencils can scratch your paper and they're really hard to create lines and details. 
As you apply water, the pencil strokes will soften and spread over your paper so you can create lots of techniques with them. You can sketch the pencils onto the paper or use a wet brush to pick pigment up straight from the pencils. I always make sure to have an eraser on hand to lighten up sketches and prevent stubborn lines from showing through paintings. You can use any eraser you like, but I often use a selection of three different types. An eraser pen is good for erasing fine details. An art eraser is firmer, so better for erasing harsh lines. And a kneaded eraser is soft and gentle on paper. Brush pens work similarly to watercolour pencils, as they're a more controlled way to distribute watercolours. I like using brush pens most when I really want to home in on an area, as you can concentrate a lot more colour in one area instead of it spreading out. This is because you'll use more pigment and less water. You can add water if you want to, so for example by dipping the brush pen into water and creating softer colours, or applying water directly to paper and dropping in the brush pen. This will help you create looser effects. I use water pens to create a combination of effects. It's easy to control the flow of water, so you can make colours as opaque or translucent as you like. The bristles are quite firm but absorbent, so the water inside the pen will last a long time. You can create effects such as drip effects, and you can pick up colour directly from your palette and apply straight to the paper. So they're very convenient and you don't create any mess as the pigment is confined to the tip of the brush. You can experiment with water to paint ratio to create a variety of different effects and washes. These pens are great for gradients as you keep squeezing water from the brush which will help dilute the pigment. These brushes are easy to rinse too. Just keep squeezing water and remove residue with a paper towel. A spray bottle isn't an essential part of a watercolour set but they are useful and I like to have one on hand. This one was from a little travel kit so it's affordable and it's a great tool. I like using a spray bottle for a couple of reasons. Firstly, you can use the bottle to create effects such as mist and it will create little droplets and spread out colours. They're also great for wetting down watercolour palettes so it makes it easier to work quickly and activate paints. Masking fluid acts as a barrier against watercolour from reaching areas you want to keep clear. It is thick and gooey like texture and it has a yellow tinge so you can see where you're applying it. It has a very strong odour so it's best to ventilate your room when you're using it and you need to use a cheap brush to apply it as it can ruin good quality brushes. You can apply masking fluid directly to your paper. It can dry quite quickly so you need to work fast. When you paint over the masking fluid it will preserve the paper underneath so you can create a lot of effects with masking fluid. You need to wait for the watercolour to completely dry before you peel off the masking fluid. Once it has dried fully, you're ready to begin peeling. You can use your fingers or a towel to gently remove the masking fluid. Gouache is an archival paint that you can use with watercolours. It has a consistency in between acrylics and watercolours, so it's a bit thicker than watercolour and it can dry quicker. You can use any colour of gouache, but my favourite is white because I use it to create strong highlights and background effects. Because it is a thicker paint than watercolour, it's more opaque, so you can use it to enhance colours. White watercolour is quite translucent, so highlights will not be as strong as using gouache. You can alter the water to paint ratio so it's easy to thin down gouache as well, if you want colours to be more subtle. I also like to apply gouache to wet paint as it creates pretty effects when the colour spreads out in the water. This effect works well for creating starry backgrounds, mist or flowers. Gel pens are another way that you can add highlights into your paintings, but it's in a more controlled way as you aren't using water and you're applying colour with a fine tip. 
Sometimes if I'm using gouache, I can make the lines too thick, so a gel pen helps create crisp, fine lines. Gel pens aren't as archival as gouache though, so sometimes it's hard to create strong highlights and some gel pens are better than others. Watercolour is a loose medium, so sometimes it's hard to see defining features. Illustration pens are a great way to create outlines and make a painting pop by adding three-dimensional elements. Illustration pens can also enhance areas, for example shadows, but a downside is they are permanent so if you make a mistake it can ruin your painting. It's best to lightly sketch out where you want to add your pens first if you are unsure. I like using gel pens in combination with illustration pens as they work well with watercolour. This may surprise you, but coloured pencils can be used in combination with watercolour. You can use them for colour glazing and creating texture. If your watercolour is looking a bit dull, even after applying a few layers, you can glaze coloured pencils over areas once the watercolour has dried. This will help you make colours appear more vibrant and richer. You can also use coloured pencils to create textures, as the pencils will glide over the grain of the paper. You can apply as much or little pencil as you want to. So now that we have discussed all of the supplies you need to get started with watercolour, let me show you how you can create some simple yet unique effects with watercolour. To create the wet on wet technique, wet down your paper with clear water until it's saturated but not soaking. Then start dropping in your watercolours and watch how the colour will spread out over the surface of the paper. I'm just dotting the colours onto the paper and because the paper is wet it's activating with the pigment. You can use different size brushes too to create small or large dots. The wet on dry technique is the opposite. Keep your paper dry and just apply the paints with some water. This technique is great for layering, as when a layer dries you can apply more pigment on top. You can also create bolder colours as you aren't using as much water as the wet on wet technique, and as your brushes become dry you can create some dry brush techniques such as trees, grass, foliage, plants and more. It's one of my favourite techniques to use as you can create a lot of effects. Gradients will help you create smoothness in your paintings and is one of the first effects you should learn as a beginner. Use a large brush to coat the paper with pigment and allow each layer to dry in between applying new layers. When a layer has dried, you can go back over it again with more pigment and this will help you create more saturation in your paintings. Gradients are the easiest effect to create and will help you get a feel for the paints as well as how to be patient with watercolours. The more layers you add, the softer the layers will become as you are flattening each layer. So that's it for today's video. I really do hope that what you learnt today is going to really help you with your watercolour paintings. I hope that you found all the tricks, techniques and effects that I used were really helpful to you too, as well as running through all the materials. Like I said, please do check out all the links down below in my description, including the free resources my Skillshare platform and also Patreon as well. And please do subscribe to my channel because it really does help this channel out and I really appreciate all of the support. See you next time guys, bye!